um, you know, they have, people have to know that it's God's will to prosper them in order to believe for prosperity. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad word. Not everybody who preaches prosperity is greedy. Not everybody who believes in prosperity is covetous. It can, any teaching can be taken to the extreme, but there is a godly prosperity, and that's why we use that title. I don't just want prosperity. I don't just want money. I, just, I don't just want wealth. I want godly prosperity. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. And I'm going to do my best to teach prosperity in a balanced way so that you get the benefit out of, out of it with none of the downside. So that scripture, in fact, let me, uh, let me just tell you, that's Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord makes rich. It makes one to grow or accumulate. Uh, God's, God's prosperity, most, most of the time, most all the time, doesn't come like uh, you don't win the lottery. You don't win overnight. It's not some kind of spiritual jackpot, but it comes, it increases, it accumulates, it grows. That way you can handle it. God doesn't want to give you more than you can handle. And so godly prosperity will come in phases or by degree, and that's a good thing. So I'm going to give you enough scriptures and enough scriptural examples to believe fully. I want to remove all doubt that somehow prosperity is wrong, and I certainly want to remove any thought that poverty is the will of God. I just don't find that in scriptures. Poverty would be the opposite of prosperity. It would be lack. Prosperity would be abundance. And just knowing the nature of God and the character of God, I could tell you that God's nature is one of abundance and not one of lack. And He doesn't project that, and He doesn't want that for his children. You know, God wants his children to be blessed just like we want our children blessed. He doesn't want them to suffer and do without. He doesn't want them to be sick and weak and defeated. And he doesn't want them to walk in poverty. And, and if you're living in poverty, it doesn't mean you're doing anything wrong. It doesn't mean that God is not helping you or mad at you or, or anything like that. It's just something to be uh, uh, recognized. It's something to be dealt with. Let's deal with poverty and poverty thinking, and let's renew our minds with the Word of God and walk in godly prosperity so that we can be a blessing to those around us. And, and really, I mean, if you want to approach prosperity in its proper, balanced uh, approach, you would say it this way. If it, you only need what you need, and, and more than you need, that kind of abundance really is so that you can give and be a blessing to others. And so we want to see prosperity in light of that because uh, God not only wants us to receive, but He wants us to be able to give. I don't know about you, but I've been in a position before that I didn't have much to give, and I, I wanted to give more. I just didn't have it. You know, you can only give all you got. <laughs> And there was a lot of times in my life where all I had wasn't very much. And, and so there, there's a desire to grow and to be blessed and be a blessing. We want to strike that proper balance. I, I'm, you know, and if, if that sounds hokey to you, if you think it's some kind of gimmick, then I'm sorry. I'm being as sincere as I can be. Uh, there is a proper way to view money. And just because you want increase doesn't mean you want it all for yourself. Uh, do you want to enjoy increase? Yes, I do. I, I want the blessings that increase provide, but I also want to be able to give. And I believe God can help us do both. And we don't have to fall prey to the hazards of wealth. Let me give you some scriptures here and, and begin with this statement. Some people spend too much, and that's wrong. They're motivated by greed and covetousness. They want things they can't afford, and they go out and buy them, and they shouldn't. That's not what we're talking about here. And we're not talking about just accumulating things just to accumulate things. So some people spend too much, and we're going to give you some examples. Some people save too much. <laughs> and you may think, oh, no, you could never save too much. Well, let's look at the Bible. Let's look at what the Bible says. You know, you can make money an idol 
and 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 either an idol of what it can do for you or an idol that you keep and and you hoard it up and worship it you know when nobody's looking uh any either one of these extremes is really not proper and i'm not saying that people are bad i mean i know some people that are hyper hyper conservative people and i wouldn't live my life that way but i don't look down on them that's their choice that's the way they choose to do their money i just don't want to be controlled by money and i don't want to be controlled by the lack of money so here's what jesus said luke chapter 12 verse 15 and he said take heed and beware of covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses so that's a good word to people that buy that are tempted to buy things they can't afford your life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses so if jesus believes that then his purpose for prosperity is not just so you can have more things, so you can have all the things and everything. That's not his purpose. Take, take heed and beware of covetousness. And I believe we can do that. He didn't say you can't have anything. He said beware of covetousness. Notice the difference. And, and people that are, you know, that don't have any moderation are like, nope, see, we shouldn't have anything. That's not what he said. He said, beware of covetousness. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. I say, yes, Lord, help me, help me to be aware of that. Help me to understand the difference between just being wealthy and being covetous. 1 Timothy 6, 9 says this, but those who, this is the Amplified, and it's important to notice this word. In, uh, in 1 Timothy 6, 9, the Amplified, those who crave to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction and miserable perishing. So that's not a good picture. The problem here is not money, and it's not having money, but it's craving to be rich. If, if my teaching on prosperity causes people who watch this to crave to be rich, I have not done my job. I've failed. That is not my intention. If, if my teaching on prosperity is going to cause people to crave to be rich and have an inordinate love for money, then I would rather not talk about money at all. I'd rather just not even deal with it because I don't want to have that influence on people. And there's plenty of other things in the Bible that I can talk about. As you well know, we have lots of subjects. I have a lot of subjects that I want to get to that are spiritual in nature and consequently they're more important than money because it's natural. So this is not my intention. 1 Timothy 6.10, the next verse in the New King James says, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So some people love money just so they can buy more stuff and other people love money just so they can pile it up and look at it. And either way, that's not the proper use of money. Not that it's not wrong to save. It's just wrong to worship and idolatry. Idolatri idol idolicize money. You don't want to go there. You want to keep it in its proper perspective. At the same time, notice 1 Corinthians 9. I love this. God is so practical and He's so balanced in His approach. You know, and here's the thing. It's because God trusts us. You know, some people don't trust themselves and they don't trust anybody else. And in their mind, nobody should have much because they might abuse it. You know, I've dealt with that spirit in communist Russia. I've dealt with that spirit when I went to the Eastern Bloc countries. They're so concerned about people not being able to handle anything that they control everything and every aspect of their lives. That's not godly. God is the one that put Adam and Eve in the garden. He gave them dominion over extreme abundance. And he said, make your own decisions. Hey, you have a free will, use it for whatever you choose. And I think we should give people the same right today. Being blessed and prosperous is not wrong. Greg Fritz gives you an honest look at God's Word to show that God delights in the prosperity of His people. Call our helpline at 918-749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. 